Well, good morning, my friends. So good to be able to connect with you again today as we come and gather around God's Word. And we see what God has to say to His church in this last day about dreams and visions and prophecy. He's really speaking to His church. He's really calling men and women from all walks of life, all ages, even your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, God said. And that means that God's got His eye on you as well. If you've not started to stir up the, the gift of dreams and prophecy, I want to encourage you. It is such a wonderful resource. It colors and brings such beautiful color to your worship experience. It draws you closer to the heart of your Father. And the best thing of all, it's biblical. We find it right there in Scripture where it says the promise is for you. And so uh, we're busy stirring up those promises. But... We want to do it in a biblical way. And so we've been on a journey to examine and explore this wonderful gift of dreams and visions. If you've not uh, heard any of the previous messages, I want to encourage you, go back. Go check it out on our YouTube channel from uh, part one all the way through. Many of the parts are in two parts, so make sure you catch both parts uh, just to get the, the full message as well. But today we're going to pick up, as I start speaking a little bit differently, we're going to start changing the pace a little bit. You, you will have found that while I'm dealing with dreams and prophecy, I'm not getting into all the technical aspects of it. And let me tell you, I have been so blessed. There are some pastors and teachers that do a fantastic job of getting into all the technical parts of dreams and prophecies. But one thing that I've not heard very much of is preparing the heart of the dreamer. Your heart is very important to God. The condition of your heart, very important to God. And so we're laying that foundation together as we go down, walk down the road together of seeing what kind of heart it is that is predisposed, that is prepared, that is ready and receptive to a dream from God. You may remember previously that I mentioned that a dream will move you. I believe that it is so important. Remember Peter's experience? Peter had to move from Joppa to Caesarea. He wouldn't get the interpretation. He wouldn't understand the meaning of the dream unless he moved first. Well, I believe that there's many types of moves involved in a dream. And when a dream comes your way, I want you to prepare yourself. You need to change gears in your thinking. You need to understand that the dream has come your way because there's an area in your life that needs a move and and God is bringing that about so that you can meet with the fulfillment of that dream I believe that a, a move or a concept of a move is common to all kinds of dreams Do, doesn't matter what kind of dream it is whether it be a prophetic dream whether it be a dream that is for you personally whether it be a dream that you need to take to a neighbor or a friend or your church or or as you develop in your gift maybe even to the nation to a government uh, member or a municipal official. I, I believe that there's a, a move that is common to all dreams. So it doesn't mean to say that just because you have a dream that deals with your desires, there's going to be a move or a, 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 a dream that deals with your direction and how you get guided, so there'll be a move. No, all dreams are going to have a move somewhere, somehow. You need, to, you need to get excited for that move. And I want us this morning to go to the Bible and I want us to look into the life of perhaps one of the most prominent dreamers in the Bible. When I mention the name, you're going to know him. One of the most prominent dreamers of the Bible. And his name was Joseph. And he had a dream when he was still a young boy, about 17 years old. And that dream would set the course of his life. That's how significant the dream he was and of course he went on to become a great dream interpreter as well because he had had an understanding so I think that there's a lot that we can learn from this young man Joseph but I want us to look in particular to the move that came into Joseph's life but before we do that let's read from scripture Genesis chapter 39 let's see what the word of God says and and let's check that foundation out and then we'll move from there Genesis 39 this is now after the dream this is this is now after we, we, we're jumping in sort of 
once Joseph has been delivered into slavery already. We, we all know the basic story, uh, I'm sure. So we're picking up a little bit further down the move in Joseph's life. Genesis chapter 39 says, Now Joseph had been brought down to Egypt, and Potiphar, an officer of Pharaoh, the captain of the guard, an Egyptian, had bought him from the Ishmaelites, who had brought him down there. The Lord was with Joseph, and he became a successful man, and he was in the house of his Egyptian master. His master saw that the Lord was with him, and that the Lord had caused all that he did to succeed in his hands. So Joseph found favor in the sight, and attended him, and he made him overseer of his house, and put him in charge of all that he had. From the time that he had made him overseer in his house, and over all that he had, the Lord blessed the Egyptian's house. For Joseph's sake, the blessing of the Lord was on all that he had in the house and field. So he left all that he had in Joseph's charge, and because of him he had no concern about anything but the food that he ate. So we're not going to start speaking today in the life of Joseph, analyzing how the sheaves bowed. You remember the dream where all his brother's sheaves bowed before his sheaf? We're not going to look at Joseph's dream about the disorderly constellations, how the sun and the moon and even the stars bowed to Joseph. We're not going to look at all that. We're picking up here where Joseph has already borne the brunt of, some would argue, very unwisely, sharing the content of his dream with his brothers and at a later stage with his fathers. So, so Joseph had received the dream, but he wasn't very wise in how he had gone and shared the content of his dream, and he was paying the price for it. But I think we can even see God's hand in Joseph's hastiness. We can see God's hand even in Joseph's misgivings and failings in delivering the dream in a proper and wise way. God used Joseph's failings to direct him because it was through the pit, it was through the slavery, uh, uh, the, the being enslaved, it was through the malicious intent of his brothers that Joseph now found himself being a slave in the house of Potiphar. Now, th th that alone is very significant. Potiphar was a very high official in Egypt. He was obviously a man that was deeply trusted by Pharaoh as well because he was a captain of Pharaoh's God. And so God had coordinated already you can start seeing God quickly starting to line up uh, the events and the order of events that are necessary to see the fulfillment of the dream. A series of very significant superventions had started unfolding. With the dream comes the move. And when that move does come, don't despair in its outworking. You may look at this and say, but goodness, man, I'm starting to see all sorts of hardships coming my way. I, I, I thought that I was in God's favor, but I'm starting to see doors that are being closed, people that are rejecting me, turning their back on me, uh, some people that would literally sell me into slavery if they could. Listen, don't despair. God is at work. The same God that gave you the dream is busy outworking that dream right now. And he was outworking it in Joseph's life in a way that I'm sure Joseph didn't see or see coming or understand. Uh, jo with, with, with the dream comes that move. Just, just, just know that the move is initiated by and coordinated by your great high shepherd. Never forget no matter how dark the road may seem, God is busy leading you. Your great shepherd is busy leading you. And there are times, my brother, there are times, my sister, where it seems like you're walking against that very narrow mountainous path with a drop, sheer drop on either side and you think that this path is treacherous. You just keep your hand in your shepherd's hand. You may not understand why you find yourself in awkward situations but God is using those situations. You need to get excited. Don't despair. Get excited when you see things getting difficult around you. 
it means that the enemy is not happy. But if the enemy is not happy, you know you're doing a great thing. So you carry on following the Lord as Joseph followed the Lord. I, I see in the scripture here, the rejection, the betrayal, and even the malice of his brothers must have cut Joseph very deeply. It, it must have been hurtful. Now I know Joseph from the reading of scripture didn't look like he always got on well with his brothers. I know that Joseph must have felt like an outcast many times in his family group. But I don't think he would have ever suspected that his brothers would have allowed their hate to carry them to such drastic measures. Measures so as to throw him into a pit and even sell him to a bunch of Ishmaelites. Ah, but, but, but this cut to Joseph's heart was exactly what was necessary to allow Potiphar entry into Joseph's biography. You may be wounded, but that wound is an entry point for good into your biography. God is in charge of your biography. Now listen, it says in the word of God, it says you are a people holy to God. You are a people holy to the Lord your God. And the Lord has chosen you to be a people for his treasured possession. Now listen to this. Out of all the people, look at the language, out of all the peoples who are on the face of the earth. Deuteronomy 14.2. So, so there, is, there has been a group, the mass, and out of this, you, you see, there's not just been a cut for you, but there's been a severing of you. You have been taken out of all the peoples of the earth. It is necessary sometimes for you to go through these difficult paths. It is nef necessary for you to go through the types of hurts and rejections that are going to qualify you to be a possessor of the dream. You may not have noticed how very different you are because you're too close to the change. I, I deal with this all the time as a pastor, dealing and talking with those that God has entrusted into my pastoral care. I deal with it all the time, and I've gone through it myself. This, this, this feeling of rejection, this feeling of not knowing where you fit in, the, the, this, this feeling of being the outcast. I know the feeling. Been there. And can I tell you, it only intensified when I accepted Jesus Christ as being my Lord and Savior. I, I, I wasn't just part of the group before, I was one of the leaders of the group before. But it's amazing that when you accept Jesus, a change happens, a move happens in your heart. And when that move happens, when you've accepted Him as Lord, something becomes declared in the spiritual realm. And perhaps you're not aware of it. But those that have not accepted the changing work of the Holy Spirit in their hearts are very quick to notice it. Something happens in the way that you speak. Something happens in your likes and dislikes. You, you're not as quick to partake in certain things as you were before. You're not as quick to laugh at the same kinds of jokes or to watch the same kinds of things or to hang out in the same kinds of places because there's something different. Uh, 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 there's been a spiritual change. There's been a move in you since you've accepted Jesus. But here's the thing. Sometimes people around you are, 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 are more sensitive to that change. They notice it more readily than you notice it. It's like this. There are times that I take a look in the mirror and I look at myself and, you know, if I look at myself in the mirror, I, I notice some changes gradually, a, a little bit grayer, yeah? A little bit fuller there perhaps I think we all go through that but generally when I look at myself it's still me but when I've run into somebody that I haven't seen for a long time right the person that hasn't seen you notices the changes in you far more quickly but why because they don't see you every day and because they don't see you every day they can say wow this has changed in you or that's changed in you now Listen, I know that they might be diplomatic. 
they might be polite and one of the first things that comes up is wow you haven't changed a bit you just need to forgive them for that little white lie because let me tell you I guarantee you you have changed a lot we all do a lot of changing and changing is not necessarily always bad what I'm trying to say is because you're so close to the change you don't notice it as quickly as those around you same thing happens in the spiritual realm there has been a lot of change when you ask Jesus to be your Lord and Savior not only were you giving your life and your heart to him but you were inviting him to come and bring about change in your life everything about Christianity has to do with change the Bible says that you need to be conformed into the image that that means conform transformed that's drastic language man the original Greek was metamorpho it means you have to be metamorphosized that's how drastic the change is you may not have noticed but I want to tell you you are a very different person to the person who first gave his heart to Jesus to the person who first gave her life to the Lord so many years ago there have been some great changes man there have been some fantastic changes problem is we are often so focused on the areas that we feel need to be changed or the areas that we feel have not changed enough and we beat ourselves up about this man I should have gotten that right or man I should have outgrown that area that we don't take time to glorify God for the wonderful miraculous change that has happened in our life and let me tell you there's been change there's been great change because of this change because you're called out because you're literally cut out of the world you'll never fit in I, I hate to bring this to, uh, to to break this news to you in case you've not realized it it breaks my heart when I see Christians going to such great lengths to try to fit in to the world it breaks my heart because they take this concept of relevance too far you're, you're not called to be relevant you're called to be different don't allow your differences to become a point of disheartening discouragement or sadness to you you need to celebrate the fact that you're different you need to celebrate the fact people that aren't different will persecute you for 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 for, for not being like them the Bible says that but you need to get great joy don't become upset by it the fact that you're different means that the Holy Spirit has been working in your heart the Bible says that you are his workmanship now you can't expect the Holy Spirit to have been working in your heart and then still look the same sound the same carry on the same as those that are unsaved it doesn't work like that so because you're different listen to me you are going to be rejected people that are different to you that don't understand you will reject you but rather than being upset by those that reject you rather be overjoyed by him who has accepted you your Lord and your Savior I know that sometimes it cuts deep because we're not talking about rejection in the sense of well maybe you just didn't receive that job offer you were waiting for or that promotion sometimes it cuts far more deep sometimes you get rejected by those that are close to you you get spurned by a spouse or what about family members you know that group of three or maybe four siblings where the others get get along but you've always been the one sibling on the outskirts right my brother my sister rejoice in him who has accepted you the Bible says that God will place the lonely in families now that means that there may be some that reject you there may be even some earthly family that rejects you but God has got a family for you it is a spiritual family it is a heavenly family and when you find your place of acceptance there you will find a group of loving people that will love you far more intensely than the worldly ones ever could get with those that accept you for who you are let's move on let's move on I, I, I've just been commenting on Joseph because of the rejection that he had experienced through his family the, the, this tragic account of Joseph's betrayal is not without hope for we read 
that through all of what this young Hebrew boy had to endure, listen to what it says. It says, the Lord was with Joseph. Now others may have rejected him, but the Lord was with Joseph. Others may have rejected you, but let me guarantee you. No, let the word of God guarantee you. The Lord of God is with you. The Lord of God is with you. And, and, and when others turn their backs, know that he has covered you under the shadow of his wing. And he's with you. So when you're going on these paths, when you're being moved according to, to, to where you need to be for the fulfillment of this dream or to see the dream or vision that you've had realized, know that he is with you. Sometimes it may not feel it, but let me tell you, he is with you because God has promised elsewhere. Listen to the beauty. Listen to how he expresses his heart. He says, I will instruct you and teach you in the way that you should go. Listen to what he says. I will counsel you with my eye upon you. Psalm 32 and verses 8. Isn't that beautiful? God is promising us that he will instruct us. But listen to what he says. He says, I will counsel you. You know that voice that says, not to the left, not to the right. This is the way walking it. That's God. He's promised to do that. And he says, my eye is upon you. His eye is upon you. And you are the apple of his eye. Never forget how precious you are to him. When God invests in you not only has he invested the precious blood of his son jesus christ in you but he invests a dream into you you are so special and treasured and cherished by god he will never let anything over overcome you he will never let anything befall you just trust your loving god and allow him to counsel you with his eye upon you joseph's experience underscores it, 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 it just comes to sometimes shake us to show us that rejection is just as much a part of the dream process as what relocation is you see the other side of rejection you may be rejected from this place sometimes you may be ejected from this place but you're going to be relocated into another place joseph had to be moved from his hometown his home village to Egypt. Remember, even Peter had to be moved from Joppa to Caesarea. Joseph had to be moved in order to see the dream process start unfolding in his life. Another part, this other part that I'm speaking about, this relocation part. Listen to what we read here in our opening scripture. It said, he was in the house of his Egyptian master. So now, Listen to what the Bible says about Joseph's relocation. It says he was in the house of his Egyptian master. So he was moved from the house of his father, relocated into the house of his Egyptian master. Now, there's no way of getting around something here. Some people have tried to explain it away, but I want to tell you, there's no way of getting around this one. It says he was in the house of his Egyptian master. He had a worldly, earthly master put over him. And, and, and Potiphar, we have no indication that he was a servant of the Most High God. No indication. In fact, there's more chance of Potiphar being a pagan and being a worshipper of idols because he was a captain in the Egyptian system. And e Egypt at that stage, a very idolatrous place. And so what we have is we have this young boy Joseph being moved out of the house of his father being put into the house of Potiphar a pagan idolatrous uh, 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 captain uh, of the God a, a man of Gentile uh, origin a, a man that was not even a Jew